didn't start creating until relatively late in my life. I'd say until my late teens. I had some potential in childhood, had better than average artistic skills, like painting, drawing and sculpture, but I didn't take it seriously enough to develop them further. At age 15, I started to attend local art school in Ukraine, but dropped out a year later and immigrated to Israel. While going through confusion and frustration in a new environment, I found that art was a good tool for coping with life challenges on a psychological level. Since those times, art making helped me to better understand my human nature by exploring various layers of my own psyche. My research on the subject isn't over yet by any means, and probably never will be. Psyche is a bottomless pit as I see it. So much the better. That means I will never run out of ideas for my artworks. In those early days when I was just starting out and learning to express my frustration with the help of art, I would draw random objects and patterns on paper. Then I would look at the composition and try to decipher the meaning as though trying to interpret a dream. These first creations made little to no sense as far as the subject matter goes. I was very fond of surrealism at the time and uh, Dali's artwork in particular, so it was not surprising to see his influence in whatever I was creating. Later I began to expand my horizons, learn some art history and explore other art styles. In recent years I was fascinated more and more by Cubism and it shows in my current artworks. I understand that certain aspects of my art style today are influenced by other artists from the past but I can say with conviction that my current art style is my own, because it comes out directly from that creative part of my being, which I like to call subconscious mind. Today, at least for me, the subject matter of each artwork, brought out from the subconscious, makes sense and tells me things that my conscious mind does not see or understand. I improvise when I create which means I don't plan the outcome in advance. I don't know what this painting will be until only after the work has begun. In the first stage, I let my subconscious go wild, so to speak, and to paint the first coat on canvas. The result is usually some unintelligible combination of colors and shapes. After this coat is thoroughly dry, I proceed to the second. Here, I employ both conscious and subconscious parts of the mind to add details and to determine the subject matter. That's when the creative process starts to go to a more definite direction. In the third coat, I sharpen the existing forms and add more details. Sometimes I like to call this step beautification. The fourth stage is usually for touch-ups only. These are the usual steps for the painting process, but sometimes I change the procedure. The rules aren't carved in stone. Also, the subject matter may change towards the end. Since it takes on average a month to finish an artwork, my mind may be in a very different state and may see the artwork in a different way. You can't step twice into the same river if you know the expression. I can't quite say that something inspired me to create any one of my artworks. Rather first I create something, then I observe it and figure out what it is. Self-consciousness. Here is the little poem which describes the artwork. Sitting on my shoulder, yapping all day long, annoying parakeet. The parakeet here depicts the constantly talking voice in the head, judging, evaluating, complaining, sometimes it's happy and singing or whatnot, but the fact is, it's there constantly consumes energy, being of little help to the organism. If I understand the phenomenon of self-consciousness right, I would say that it is a part of the conscious mind that divides itself from the rest of the conscious activity and tries to be in control. Safety. Wrapping arms around my head, feeling safe in my own self. The strive for safety is one of the natural human drives. Majority of us feel unsafe in various situations or environments. And a lot of us, in order to deal with those situations, so to speak, wrap our arms 
around our heads to protect ourselves from the pressures of the external world. Closing our eyes and ears, building the wall around ourselves, disconnecting from the reality. That's what the painting is about, to show this tendency. Molasses. Like molasses, this ticket of problems is enveloping me. Making too much fuss, I flap my arms and cuss. At last I break free, only to meet my end. The idea here is to show the futility of struggle. I'm not implying that we should ignore our problems, rather that there is a certain mindset that finds the struggle itself fulfilling, meaningful. Generally, what I do is find various psychological states in myself and then I attempt to depict them on canvas. While doing this, I process my discoveries on mental and emotional levels, and eventually I understand them better. My hope is that viewers may recognize certain psychological issues in themselves and reach a better understanding of their own nature. Understanding the self will lead to a healthier society.